let's go over the categories that are most important for describing the order of growth of different computational processes. First, we need to learn some simple properties. Constant terms do not affect the order of growth of a process. So it's the same thing to say that something's theta n or theta 500 n or theta n over 500. And since these are all the same statement, we always use the simplest one. So there's no reason to ever put a constant number inside. It's not technically wrong, but conventionally, we want to write this, because the whole point of theta notation is to write simple descriptions of the growth of, of resources used by some computational process. Logarithms, as we saw in the exponentiation example, sometimes appear, and the base of the logarithm actually doesn't matter. It does not affect the order of growth of a process. So log base 2 of n is the same as log base 10 of n is the same as the natural logarithm of n. Finally, you need to know what to do when you have nested processes. So if some inner process is repeated for each step in an outer process, you need to multiply the steps in the outer and inner processes to find the total number of steps or operations. So here's an example. Let's say a and b are two different lists, and we want to count the number of elements that overlap. Well, we're going to keep track of a count, we'll go through every item in A. That's the outer process, which has a number of steps that's the length of A. We're also going to see if each item there is in B. Now, item in B looks like a single statement, but it, I'll just tell you now, it's implemented by searching over every element of B. There's no better way to do it. So if B is a list, item in list is something that takes time that's proportional to the length of b, or length of b number of steps. So the outer process has length of a steps, the inner process has length of b steps. If a and b are both length n, then the overlap in total requires theta n squared steps, or n times n, because we multiplied. Okay. So what are all the orders of growth that you need to know? Well, the first is called exponential growth, and it will be some constant number b raised to the nth power. These are processes that grow very quickly, and so you really can't compute them for large n. The recursive Fibonacci implementation that we've been talking about so much is one of these. So we saw that even for Fib 35, it's just an enormous amount of work, and that's because the number of steps required to compute Fib n is theta of phi n, where phi is 1.618. A way to recognize exponential growth is that when you add 1 to the problem size, so Fib 21 instead of Fib 20, the work required scales by a whole multiplicative factor. So one more requires double the work or one more requires 1.6 times the number of work. That's an indication of exponential growth. Quadratic growth is like overlap. Incrementing the problem size, so the length of the list that we're computing the overlap, increases the amount of work that you have to do by n. So if the lengths of the lists are already 50 and we go up to 51, well then we have about 50 more work to do. Theta n is linear growth. So we saw the implementations of exp and factors that we developed in this lecture, the slow versions anyway, required linear growth. So the size of the input dictated how many steps there were. Square root growth occurred when we computed factors the smart way. And that's a different category from theta n. Theta log n for any base of the logarithm is called logarithmic growth. The fast version of exp did this, and it means that doubling the problem size only increments the resources used. So these are very efficient, because you can have a huge problem, and you get a doubly huge problem, you only have to do kind of uh, increment more work. And then the best possible scenario is theta 1, which is constant time. 
the input size doesn't matter at all. So if you take in n and you return n plus 1, there's only one step to getting there, no matter how big n is. That's a constant time procedure. Now, these aren't all the different possible theta categories. This is on a continuum, and there are many other options in between. But we won't talk about them in this class, because this is enough to worry about already, and these are all of the important classes. And in fact, linear growth, logarithmic growth, and exponential growth are really the most important ones to understand and to learn how to recognize.